Hello there. In this video, I'm going to talk about Danforth Bus Lines Limited. This was a company that established and operated multiple bus routes within Southern Scarborough and North York, bringing public transit to these parts of Toronto. So, let's get into the video. Prior to 1954, bus service within what we today call Toronto was quite different. The Toronto Transit Commission's operational mandate prior to 1954 was exclusively within the old city of Toronto. While the TTC did operate some bus routes outside of the city's boundaries, this was done in partnership with whatever other municipalities the route ran through. This meant that the towns and villages surrounding the city of Toronto would either have to contract out bus service to the TTC or establish their own transit operator, be it either municipally owned or privately owned. The early 1900s would thus see multiple bus operators spring up in the towns and villages beyond the city's boundaries. All of these operators would eventually become part of the TTC in 1954, marking that the last major amalgamation of transit operators within Toronto. The subject of this video will be one such operator, that being Danforth Bus Lines Limited, or DBL for short. Contrary to its name though, the DBL operated bus service not just around Danforth Avenue, but also in the township of North York, which isn't exactly near the street the company is named after. So the questions to be asked and answered in this video are, how did the company come to be, what routes did it operate, and are any of them still around? The history of Danforth Bus Lines Limited starts in the spring of 1926. That year, a Mr. C.F. Ramsell would establish the Birchcliff Heights bus. This route would operate from Latrell Loop where it would connect with various TTC streetcar routes and then run east along Danforth Avenue to Birchcliff Heights, whatever that means. I say that because my source for this is a bit unclear as Birchcliff Heights is beyond Birchmount Road, which this route wouldn't reach until a couple months after it was established. If I had to guess its very first terminus, I would say either Danforth Road or Warden Avenue. Be that as it may, a couple months later in June of 1926, a Mr. T.J. Shonaker would purchase the Birchcliff Heights bus route and establish Danforth Bus Lines Limited. His first order of business would be to extend rush hour service of the Birchcliff Heights bus to Birchmount Road. The route would operate 11 hours a day, but this would soon be increased to all day service. The DBL would operate this lone bus route for 11 years before the network would be expanded. On July 22, 1937, that expansion would occur when the DBL would get its second bus route, the Scarborough Junction bus. This route would operate two services, the first being the all-day service which operated from Latrell Loop east along Danforth Avenue and Danforth Road to Midland Avenue. The route would then run north to Lorraine Avenue. The second service was the rush hour only service which followed the same route but would operate north along Kennedy Road to Eglinton Avenue. The route would then run east to Midland Avenue before heading south along Midland back to Danforth. During the evening rush hour, the route would do this loop in reverse. On March 1st, 1938, TJ Shonaker would purchase the Swansea bus from a Mr. Sefton. I couldn't find anything on this incarnation of the route, and it would ultimately be sold to West York Coach Lines on March 6th, 1945. On August 25th, 1938, the Birchcliff Heights bus would see its route extended. The route would now continue east along Danforth Avenue and Kingston Road to Claremore Avenue, simply referred to as Stop 12. Buses would then run north along Claremore Avenue, west along McNabb Boulevard, now McIntosh Street, and Highview Avenue to Birchmount Road before heading south back to Danforth Avenue. The outbreak of World War II would see the various bus companies around Toronto take a hit to their operations due to the rationing of gas and rubber. This, however, didn't stop them from providing their services and even expanding their service. 
The DBL would be the first to expand its service during the war, with it beginning service on our route to the de Havilland plant at Downsview Airport. This route would operate from Vaughan Loop at St. Clair and Bathurst, and then run north along Vaughan Road and Dufferin Street to Downsview Airport. Or that was the plan at least, as this route would only last one day before being shut down after a formal protest by the TTC was made to the Department of Highways. This was because the TTC had an exclusive operating franchise along Vaughan Road within the Township of York to operate the Vaughan Bus. What this meant was that only TTC buses could pick up and drop off passengers on Vaughan Road. DBL owned buses were only allowed to pick up passengers on outbound buses and only drop off passengers on inbound ones. To get around this, the DBL would go to de Havilland to charter buses instead of the DBL formally operating them as a scheduled service. Service on the route would resume in September of 1941. The outbreak of World War II would also see the General Engineering Company, also known as Gecko, establish a large munitions plant at the intersection of Warden and Eglinton Avenues. At its peak, this plant would employ 5,300 people and they needed a way to get to the plant. The DBL would partner with Hollinger Bus Lines to operate a bus service to the plant with service commencing in March of 1941. This route would be called the Dawes Road Bus, and it would operate from the Dawes Road Terminal at Dawes Road and Danforth Avenue. The route would run north along Dawes Road and Victoria Park Avenue to Eglinton Avenue. From there it would travel east to Birchmount Road. This route would operate like this until 1950, when its service was ended and replaced by a DBL controlled route. In June of 1945, a third route would be added to the DBL network with the introduction of the Regents Park Bus. This route would operate from Latrell Loop, east on Danforth Avenue and north on Pharmacy Avenue to St. Clair Avenue. The route would then loop around via St. Clair Avenue, Maybourne Avenue and Florence Avenue, now called St. Bede's Road, back to Pharmacy Avenue. In November of 1945, the Birchcliff Heights bus would see its route extended again, this time from Claremore Avenue to Midland Avenue, simply called Stop 14. Buses would loop around via Midland Avenue, Park Street, and McNabb Boulevard, now McIntosh Street. On November 19, 1945, Danforth Bus Lines Limited would establish the North York Bus Lines brand, which was used for routes operating within the township of North York. The first route would be the Wilson Weston Bus, which operated from Vaughan Loop north along Vaughan Road and Dufferin Street to Wilson Avenue. The route would then head west along Wilson to Humber Street in the village of Weston, where it would connect with the Weston Streetcar. Early 1946 would also see an addition to the Birchcliff Heights bus, as a new rush hour only service would begin operating. This service would operate from Latrell Loop east along Danforth Avenue to Birchmount Road. It would then run north to Highview Avenue and east to Islesworth Avenue. The route would then run north along Islesworth Avenue to Kennedy Road before turning south and running back to Highview Avenue. This rush hour service would last until January 1949 when it was discontinued. On April 1st, 1947, North York Bus Lines would get its second route, the Young Boulevard Bus. This route would operate from Glen Echo Loop where it would connect with the Young Streetcar. The route would run along Young Boulevard and west along Wilson Avenue to Avenue Road. From there, buses would run south on Avenue Road and west on Melrose Avenue to Bathurst Street. Buses would then run north on Bathurst Street back to Wilson Avenue. Seven months later, the NYBL would get its third bus route, this being the Otter Bus. This route would operate from Otter Loop north along Avenue Road and west along Lawrence Avenue. Buses would then run north on Gray Road and west on Glengarry Avenue, north on Leadbury Street, and then east on Melrose Avenue back to Avenue Road. A couple weeks later, the NYBL's fourth bus route, the Trithui Bus, would enter service. 
This route would operate from Union Street along Townsley Street, north along Weston Road, Keel Street and Trithui Drive to Jane Street. Buses would then run north along Jane Street to Wilson Avenue. The NYBL would gain its fifth bus route a year later in October of 1948, that being the Shepherd Bus. This route would operate from Vaughn Loop north along Vaughn Road and Dufferin Street to Wilson Avenue. Buses would then run east along Wilson Avenue and then north along Wilson Heights Boulevard to Shepherd Avenue. On August 2, 1949, the Young Boulevard bus would see a change in its service as it would no longer run north along Bathurst Street back to Wilson Avenue, but instead buses would now run south to a loop at Lawrence Avenue. Back out in Scarborough, on September 5, 1950, the DBL would get its fourth and final bus route as on this day service on the Eglinton Avenue bus would commence. This route would run from Latrell Loop east along Danforth Avenue and north on Pharmacy Avenue to Eglinton Avenue. The route would then run east along Eglinton Avenue to Scarborough Golf Club Road, simply called Stop 27. That same day, the rush hour service provided by the Scarborough Junction Bus would become an all-day route known as the Midland and Eglinton Bus. The Scarborough Junction route name would be retired. A couple days later, the NYBL's Trithui bus would see its route extended east along Wilson Avenue to Keel Street. This extension was short-lived, however, as by April 23, 1951, service had been cut back to its original terminus at Jane Street. That same day, service on the Wilson Weston route would be extended south along Weston Road to Oak Loop for a connection with the Weston Trolley Bus. August 7, 1951 would see the final expansion to the Danforth Bus Line's network of routes, as on this day the St. Clair Bathurst Shepherd route would enter service as part of the North York Bus Lines. This route would run from Vaughn Loop directly up Bathurst Street to Shepherd Avenue. In December of that year, its service would be extended west along Shepherd Avenue to Wilson Heights Boulevard. In March of 1952, a short turn service would be added that terminated at Wilson Avenue. Nineteen fifty two would see a small contraction in the services provided by the North York bus lines. Firstly, in January, the Wilson Weston bus would have its route cut back from Oak Loop to Clayson Road. Secondly, on July 5th, the Young Boulevard and Otter bus routes would be abolished, ending five years of service. Lastly, in September, the DBL's Eglinton bus route would have its service cut back from Scarborough Golf Club Road. Instead, buses would now loop around Kingston Road and Markham Road back to Eglinton Avenue. The end of Danforth Bus Lines Limited would come in July of 1954 when it was acquired by the TTC. As part of the formation of the new Metropolitan Toronto Government, the Toronto Transit Commission would be uploaded to the new regional government. Its operational mandate would now encompass all 13 municipalities within Metro Toronto and not just the City of Toronto. As part of this upload, the TTC would acquire all of the region's private transit operators, including Danforth Bus Lines Limited and its North York Bus Lines brand. So now the question is, what impact did Danforth Bus Lines have on the city's bus network, and what, if anything, still remains of it? Well, starting with the bus routes themselves, they all played a role in shaping the city's modern network, but some routes are still more complete than others. In Scarborough, the old Regents Park bus would directly become the 67 Pharmacy immediately after becoming part of the TTC. The Eglinton bus would become part of the 34 Eglinton East bus in 1957, although it no longer operates to Kingston Road, having been cut back to Kennedy Station in 2014. Instead, service east of Kennedy to Kingston Road is provided by the 86 Scarborough and 116 Morningside buses. The service provided by the Midland and Eglinton bus lives on today as the 113 Danforth bus. 
although the service provided along Midland Avenue is now handled by the 20 Cliffside bus. Lastly, there was the route that started it all, the Birchcliff Heights bus, which lives on as the 12 Kingston Road bus. Of the lines formerly part of the North York bus lines, the most complete route still in existence is the St. Clair Bathurst Shepherd bus, which was merged with the TTC's pre-existing Bathurst bus in 1954, becoming the 7 Bathurst we know today. The service along Shepherd Avenue would become part of the 84 Shepherd West bus. The former Shepherd bus lives on as today's 29 Dufferin bus, although service along Wilson Heights Boulevard no longer exists. The Wilson Avenue bus, as its name implies, would eventually become part of today's 96 Wilson and 165 Weston Road North buses. Lastly, there was the Trithui bus, which lives on in multiple bus routes these days. The section of the route along Old Weston Road is now part of the 41 Keel and 168 Symington buses. The section along Trithui Drive itself is part of the 32C Eglinton West via Trithui bus. Lastly, the section along Jane Street is now part of the 35 Jane. While the Young Boulevard and Otter buses didn't quite make it to 1954, parts of their route still live on today as well. The service along Young Boulevard, provided by the old Young Boulevard bus, still lives on as part of the 97B Young via Young Boulevard bus. The services these routes provided along Avenue Road also still live on today as the 61 Avenue Road North bus. And lastly, the service provided along Wilson Avenue by the Young Boulevard bus still lives on today as the 96 Wilson and 165 Weston Road North buses. So those are the bus routes, all of which still live on today in some way, shape, or form. But what about something more tangible, like say a building? Are there any old Danforth bus lines buildings still left? Shockingly, yes there are. As with any other transit operator, the Danforth bus lines owned a few properties that were inherited by the TTC in 1954. Firstly, there was the old terminal and garage at 2881 Danforth Avenue, which was redeveloped in 1966. Today, the site is now a mixed-use building. There was a lot down the street at 3319 Danforth Avenue where the DBL would store some buses. That lot still exists today and is now a used car dealership. Right next door at 3325 Danforth Avenue was another garage owned by the DBL. The building still exists today and is now an auto shop, although it has been remodeled. The last property that was inherited and still exists today is the North York Bus Lines Garage at 3687 Dufferin Street. Today the building is also still used as an auto shop, although it too has been remodeled. And that is the history of Danforth Bus Lines Limited and its North York Bus Lines brand, which brought public transit to Southern Scarborough and North York. Bus routes that still exist in some form today and even a couple of buildings. And with that, I will end this video here. Thank you for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it and want to see more like it, please hit that subscribe button because there are more videos like it on the channel. If there's anything you want to say about the Danforth Bus Lines Limited, don't be afraid to do so in the comment section down below. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.